So this prize was, uh, again, at the discretion of the British Journalism Awards judges, really for the, for the journalist whose work had impressed them most over the course of the judging day. And uh, as, as with Richard Beeston, the winner was a unanimous and enthusiastic choice once it had first been suggested. So uh, I invite Jennifer to come to stage to reveal the winner. And the winner of the Journalist of the Year is Michael Gillard. So as to explain, Jonathan's come up uh, again, and, uh, and also uh, Michael can't be here, so his long-term collaborator, Laurie Flynn, is going to, uh, to uh, say, uh, say a few words on his behalf. Well, hello, Michael, wherever you are. If you're in Latin America, a glass of Pacharan would go down nicely. And a good joke, and a good piece of laughter to relieve the pressure you've been under for a very long time from the gangster of the year. Uh, an award you have singled out for this gentleman and his collaborators, those who have allowed him to prosper and survive beyond the reach of justice. Uh, a disgrace, if ever there was one. I give you a triple distilled, organic, full-bodied toast for all the pleasure you've brought me as a friend. And now you have a lot of new friends. And you have a huge capacity for friendship, as well as a huge capacity for hard work, for setting your own targets, for being autotelic, for not doing what you're told all the time. And that is something that we need to recover. Journalism is an individual responsibility. Freedom of speech is an individual responsibility. Freedom of expression is an individual responsibility. And your courage is, I hope, contagious. Very contagious. Uh, I'm sorry that you can't be here. I'm sorry that you had to run a mile from the last time you won an award. And uh, your erstwhile friend, Alan Rosbridger, had to go up and get it for you because you were too shy and embarrassed and too awkward. And now you've contrived a situation where you've cross continents to avoid getting an award and you've put me in the all-time embarrassing position of either pretending to be you or pretending to be the journalist of the year which I'm certainly not there are far finer reporters here and elsewhere all over the world than I'll ever be but I'm deeply proud that you won this award and I know that you would like me to thank all your colleagues who stood by you I know you'd like me to thank your wonderful lawyers, Pia and Louis, who stood by you, and your QC, who uh, acted so memorably in your, uh, in your defense. I know you'd like to thank your wonderful father and mother, and your family, and your friends. I'd just like to say, in conclusion, that Michael really has a huge capacity for hard work tremendous empathy and social skills, a capacity to drink me under the table and to drink the table under the table. I think this may be a genetic fault because he's a wonderful dad, also an extremely distinguished journalist, whom he insists on referring to, until recently, as the real Michael Gillard. Uh, he can also drink most of the people in this room under the, under the table. Although I understand he's now teetotal, which is just another way of proving how, how strong-willed he is. Michael also has a deep and enduring faith in a truly independent journalism of genuine disclosure. And he also has a wonderful capacity to laugh and have fun. And I think of him when he was wandering through Colombia, exposing a fraudster called... Mark de Beaufort, who had won 14 international awards for risk journalism. Uh, most of them uh, had to be sent, sent back because, uh, in fact, he'd faked the whole program. Uh, he'd interviewed a man in a towel 
and said he was the, the chief financial negotiator of the Cali cartel. Turned out he was a parking attendant who had been paid to put a towel around his head. Uh, so uh, Michael also invented his own unique journalistic award, the Premio Turdo, which he brought back. He had found a, a, a street market somewhere in Colombia where they sold, uh, you can guess what a, a turdo is, I'm sure, being sophisticated beings. And he brought one back, and he's still trying to give it to uh, Mark de Beaufort and, and uh, Carlton Television, late and unlamented of this parish. So, there's one other thing I know Michael would like me to do. Uh, we, co we communicate by transubstantiation or something like that. Uh, he'd like me to thank all the whistleblowers, the people who come forward in the public interest fearlessly and tell the truth. He'd like to thank the honest police officers who've come forward to tell the truth about some of the huge hidden scandals in London. The Stephen Lawrence murder and another shocking murder, the murder of... Uh, of Daniel Morgan, a private detective in South East London 27 years ago. And I know Michael would like me very much to say how much he admires Alistair Morgan and his sweetheart Kirstein for continuing against all the odds to probe the truth about why it is the Metropolitan Police continues to cover up this shameful murder and who caused it. And on my own behalf, I'd also like to thank Derek Haslam, a police officer of enormous courage who had been driven out of the force and then has worked undercover to try to help the Morgan family. These are also award-winning heroic figures who inspire us all. So Michael, I hope you're well. Thank you. <laughs>